I would like to talk to you today about how Satan uses church buildings to make antichrists. Many people are familiar with the scriptures, especially the book of Revelation, where it talks about the antichrist, the man of sin, the beast, uh, this man that's going to be coming in the future that's uh, showing up to say that he's like Jesus Christ, a, a counterfeit for the Lord Jesus Christ. But what a lot of people don't realize is that there are actually people that are antichrists as well. There are plural antichrists and a singular antichrist. A very in interesting thing here. And I'll show you how the system works before we get into the scriptures. How it works is you have a conservative church here, a independent fundamental Baptist, IFB, and people go there and they're raised and everything and, and uh, they see the hypocrisy, they see the deacon cheating with uh, this woman over here and the church kind of keeps it quiet and they see the child abuse and they might go through some of it themselves and they see standards that are completely without scriptural backing. They see the hypocrisy of the IFB system and what happens is when they're old enough they leave and they go over here to this little bridge called atheism and this bridge is above the fires of hell. And a lot of times they don't go anywhere other than just the bridge there. But many times they will actually go to a new type of church because they've been through the old type there and they see all the bad things and all the problems. But they'll go through atheism. They say, I reject this. I don't believe that there is a God. And then they'll say, I found a new way. I found a better way to worship Jesus and everything. And I, I just love it. It's so much, uh, there's so much more liberty and, and everything. Um, and they go and it's, it's this whole modern rock and roll tattooed, uh, dark atmosphere and, and everything. It's just so cool and life changing little lessons from, uh, key parts of scripture and whatever else. That's what they do. I mean, these, these happen all the time. I've seen this thing. I've been talking about these for years. Uh, recently there was this, uh, chick that came out that, red hair, uh, whatever girl. And, and she came out and she's been converted to Jesus Christ now. And she was raised in a conservative Baptist, uh, home. Her father was a Baptist pastor and she left and she was an atheist for a while. And she kind of rebelled against it by, you know, destroying herself and her morality there. And a real, real smart thing to do when you rebel, you know, but that's what people do. Um, their own wickedness is what corrects them. But she left, she was a porn star for a while, and then she met a guy, and the guy took her to a new type of church, and she just loves it now, and she's come back to Christ. I was a pastor's kid for almost all my life. I grew up in church, I was always in church. You know, I was also homeschooled, so my life truly felt like a cage. And I'm not saying Christianity is a cage, I'm saying religion was the cage. I was a Baptist, you know, I was a Baptist pastor's child for the longest time, right? Me and my family did not have a good relationship and I'm the middle of five children. So I'm talking about my other brothers and sisters and my parents. It just truly felt like such a cage. I was a very rebellious child. Uh, well, <clears throat> there's different types of Christs that you have to watch out for. But you'll see this thing time and time again. And uh, the devil's behind it. How will you say, well, there are good church buildings out there. Um, okay, could you please show me one in the scriptures? There are no church buildings in the scriptures. There's a reason for that. The devil uses them mightily. But let me show you here. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. I'll show you the scriptures on this. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. The Bible says, the King James Bible says, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist, singular, shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. There's more than one. Whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us. They had some good standards over here, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now you say, well, then you're saying that the IFB system is right. No, here's how the devil does this. The IFB system, independent fundamental Baptist or other conservative type churches, I've been to conservative Methodist churches before that will hold on to a lot of the good standards. What they'll do is they'll have truth mixed with lots of traditions of men. 
The church building itself is a tradition of men. There's no New Testament scripture saying that they went to church. Go to church is not anywhere in the King James Bible. Can't speak from the satanic ones that come from the Vatican, the New Versions, NIV, NASB, NKJV, all the others like that. I can't speak for those. Only for the written perfect word of God here, the King James Bible. But what they'll do is they will have certain good things. Okay, I'll give you an example. Women should dress in modest apparel. And so these girls are raised always having to wear skirts or dresses over here. Now see, that's a standard that goes back thousands of years. It's only the women's suffrage movement in the early 1900s that made it acceptable for women to wear pants. Before that, women wouldn't be caught in pants. They actually wanted to look like ladies and not look like men. See, they didn't want to be transvestites. And if you study the etymology of the word transvestite, it was invented in the early 1920s, the same time that women's suffrage came around. Hmm, look it up. But they'll take a standard like that and they'll say, okay, women should wear skirts and dresses. But then the IFB will say, but the skirts and dresses have to be a certain collar. They have to be a certain length and a certain type and a certain style and whatever. And they impose all these traditions that are not scriptural onto something that is biblical. Um, men should have short hair. It's a shame for a man to have long hair. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I think it is. Um, <clears throat> fine, it's a good standard. But then what they'll do is they'll say, okay, it has to be an inch off of your collar here, and it, it cannot touch this, and it has to be above the ear, and they have to, and there can be no facial hair. Show me in the New Testament where it says a man shouldn't have facial hair. No scripture at all. But that's how the uh, IFB will do it. The IFB says uh, there's guys, uh, some guy, I can't think of what his first name was, it was Don Green or something, I think had a guy tell me the one time a Baptist was telling me about this, and he said he actually was against uh, wire rim glasses, like what I wear. My glasses when I'm driving and things. These would be sinful to him. You have to wear plastic rimmed glasses. Uh, where's that at in the New Testament again? Oh, that's right, it's not. See, they elevate their traditions of, above men. Make sure that you wear your Sunday best. Make sure it's a black suit with a white shirt and a black tie. Hmm, kind of like Freemasons wear, but let's not get into that. Um, because Freemasonry has no part in building church buildings and things. And Yeah, you can see my video proving that, but that's a whole other issue. But you see what I'm saying? There's, they take things from Scripture that you know, are good, and then they take it and they pervert it and they twist it. And so you get people raised in this system and they just finally say, Oh, I just can't take the hypocrisy. Oh, they're, they're the holy, righteous man of God up there. But then when you get uh, to know them and you're there at their place for a picnic on a Saturday afternoon, they're sitting around telling dirty jokes. Oh, huh? And so they see that. They leave. They become an atheist. They go to a secular university or something like that, and they have some devil there that trashes the Bible, and their pastor was always busy trying to build up the church building attendance, so he never taught them how to defend the Scriptures. So they go off to university, they get their mind messed up, they become an atheist, and then later on they come back and they go for the nice little fun worship center experience over there. There's a little rock music coming out there if you haven't figured that out. It doesn't mean it stinks. I mean, in my opinion, it stinks, but, you know, a little loud music coming out. I've been outside of some of these worship centers, and you get into the parking lot, you can feel the music beating in your chest from the parking lot, 100 yards away from the building. Can't imagine what it's like inside those uh, satanic centers. But that's what they do. You see, uh, <clears throat> they went out from us. Bible-believing Christians, the standards that we have that are in the Scriptures, we know that these things are correct. You will learn some correct things in a conservative church building. They do say some things that are right. But the thing is, <clears throat> if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. I have continued with my beliefs that I used to preach when I was preaching in IFB churches. I've continued with my stands for the King James Bible. I still believe women should dress in modest apparel. I still believe that men should look different. They should have short hair and a beard. Um, I believe in those standards of Scripture. I hold to those things. See, I, would have con I continued with those doctrines that I was taught, and I rejected the other stuff that's not in the scriptures. It's important.
But it says there, <clears throat> they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. <clears throat> and these people, I will tell you right now, I'm related to people that go to this type of thing right here. I used to be part of this movement. The only thing that these people are truly against, the only group that these people hate, are people like me. That's the only group. I don't want to judge, Mike. I have Catholic friends. I have friends that are LGBTQ, whatever. I have friends that are Muslims. I have friends that are Jehovah's Witness. I have friends that are Mormon. I have friends that are Buddhist. And I have friends that are, well, who don't you like? Well, there's narrow-minded fundamentalist Bible thumpers. They get really angry at people like me because they're antichrists. That's the whole thing. And again, understand the term antichrist. It doesn't just mean that you hate Jesus Christ. It also means that you hate him by replacing him with something of your own creation. That's what it is. The Antichrist, when he shows up, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, a lot of different terms for him. When this man shows up, he's going to be all things to all people. All right? He's going to come in and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Um, he's going to you know, basically proclaim that he is God. And he's going to say the right things for people and deceive the people. That's what these people over here do. All right? And you say, well, which one is more wicked then? Is this one more wicked than this one or that one than this one? Uh, well, it's part of the same system, you see? Because this here gives you a bad taste in your mouth for absolute truth, so you reject absolute truth so that you can end up over here. That's how the system works. Uh, years ago, there was this thing of... Uh, survivors of independent fundamental Baptist churches or whatever, and they were telling stories, these girls were telling stories how they would be involved, you know, fornication and things and basically pedophilia because a lot of them were minors when it happened with Baptist church members. And it was this horrible thing and they were abused and they were made fun of and put down and all these horrible things. And they left, went through atheism for a little while, rejected God, and then they went right to the worship center stuff. And now they're going and they're wearing pants, they get tattoos, they get all the wicked things of the world. And they're over here and they enjoy their Christianity. Christianity's fun now. Yeah. <clears throat> Very sad. Second Peter chapter 2. And again, why are you turning the Bible? What's that all about? Because the Bible is the authority. <clears throat> See, that's another way that you can tell that both of these systems behind me here are wrong. The King James Bible is not the final authority here, and it's definitely not the final authority here or here. All three of these systems hate the King James Bible. These will profess to use it here, but they don't follow it. They say, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. That is a lie. It's an absolute lie. I've been exposing that for years now. <clears throat> it just goes through me when these people lie like that. It makes me very upset. They do not believe it by faith. They do not practice the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And they are not in practice. They are very far away from it. <clears throat> and I'll tell you right now, again, I knew a guy years ago. I uh, had two, two little twin eight-year-old daughters, I think they were at the time. And their Baptist pastor over here molested them. And how much child molestation goes on in these places? Why is that happening? Ask yourself the question. I don't care what you think about me if you don't like me or don't like the, the way that I say things. Or what. Ask yourself a logical question. Why is there so much abuse here? Why is it covered up? Is this the Holy Spirit or is this just some kind of a fleshly thing? Or is this part of Satan's plan to bring in the Antichrist system? I won't answer that for you. You can answer it for yourself. 2 Peter chapter 2, we'll begin in verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. These people over here, and it doesn't mean federal government either. It's talking about governing the body, controlling the body, saying, no, don't do this, don't say that, don't laugh at that, don't listen to that, don't look at that. That's government, self-government. <clears throat> Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, 
made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. These two groups right here speak evil of the things that they understand not. These people over here, they understand the right standards from Scripture, but they don't really follow it, and they add to it. That's the problem there. But it's just very interesting to me that these people are compared to what again? Beasts, natural brute beasts. Who shows up in Revelation chapter 13? The beast, another name for the Antichrist. So you have the Antichrist, the beast, and Antichrists as brute beasts. Man didn't write this book. This is God's book. All these tie-ins and things like that, it's amazing. Verse 13, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Let me stop right there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about uh, that God shall send them strong delusion, that they all might be damned, that believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Huh. Shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. God is going to send them strong delusion. These people think that they're worshiping Jesus Christ. And they're not. They're actually worshiping the Antichrist, and they themselves are Antichrists. And they're doing it all through the name of religion. They're thinking to themselves, well, I can't wait to get to heaven. Oh, we're going to have a rock concert up there. I get to see Jesus' tattoos on his leg and everything on his thigh. Did a whole study on tattoos if you haven't seen that. They're very poisonous, very toxic, and condemned in Scripture. Watch the study. But these people, they think that heaven's going to be a nightclub. It's insanity. <clears throat> Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. A man looks at a woman to, and lusts after her. He's committed adultery with her in his heart already. Look at the way these whores, these harlots, dress when they come to these places here. And by the way, there's some real harlots in this system over here as well. They might wear long dresses, but they're uh, very loose morally. But these over here, are you kidding me? <clears throat> Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Covetous practices. We need to go out and we need to have soul winning marathons. We need to have a bus ministry. We need to get people in here. Bring them in. Bring them in. Get them. Get their money. Let's get people in the pews. Jack Hiles, how to build a good New Testament church. How to, how to do soul winning ministries. How to get all this stuff. Let's have marketing. They're using secular marketing. That's why the qual quality of biblical Christianity dropped through the floor when church buildings became very popular. They are not looking for quality anymore. They're looking for quantity. And these people over here, literal, literal, have, uh, literal books have been written um, that say how to market. How you go out into the community and you ask the people, uh, do you go to church? They say no. And you say, well, what, what would it take for you to go to church? What would you like to see? If, what, if, what if we play Hollywood movies? And what if we offer beer? Or what if we offer refreshments? Movies for the children. And Well, yeah, I'd, I'd come then, I guess. Yeah. They do that over here. It's insanity. <clears throat> Verse 15, Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. You read back in the Old Testament there, his donkey there, the Bible word is ass, <clears throat> is, is speaking to him because the, it sees a an angel in the way and tries to turn out of the way and he, he's whipping it and everything else and it starts speaking to him. <clears throat> Verse 17, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. That's why they like their uh, worship centers to be dark. We'll be talking about that in the next study. <clears throat> For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. <laughs> oh, they can put on the, the speeches and things over here. Boy, they can put on the things and God has a plan for your life. If you've had a bad time, God loves you. He has unconditional love for you. He wants to give you the best life now. He wants, he's got a plan for you, friend. Great, great swelling words of vanity. They allure you. They draw you in. These antichrists. 
That's what they do. <clears throat> they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error, that were clean. See? You had some good standards over here. You were clean, but you escaped from this because of the errors and things. And you come over here, they get you in there. That's what they do. While they promise them liberty. <laughs> uh, absolutely. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. My oldest brother's into this whole movement over here. And he said the one time that his praise and worship band, every member of the band except my brother was on antidepressants. Huh. They promise liberty, but they, uh, while, while they promise liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Why are you depressed? Why are you walking around having to take antidepressants and you're thinking suicidal thoughts and everything else and you're part of the worship team? It's a little problem. <clears throat> Verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you get some good knowledge over here. You hear the right things many times. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You're better off over here going to conservative church buildings and saying, you know what, I'm tired of the hypocrisy. I'm going to worship at home the way that they did all through the book of Acts, all through the Pauline epistles. They worshiped at home. I'm just going to do it that way. Thankful for some of the old hymns I learned over here and the King James Bible and some of the standards and whatever, but I'm just a little tired of the hypocrisy. No thank you. Leaving. I'll meet with some friends and whatever else, other brethren, go witness to people and think, you know, like they did in the book of Acts. Um, and it just amazes me. We can spend, you know, Christians, professing Christianity can spend just hundreds of millions of dollars building church buildings but we can't figure out how to go back to the doing things the way that they did in the book of Acts. Raising up elders in cities and things and the people meeting together in local assemblies. Not coming to church on a Sunday with your Sunday best on and whatever. You can meet any day of the week, by the way. They met on the first day of the week in the book of Acts, which would be a Sunday, not the Sabbath day. You don't have to keep that according to Romans chapter 13, verse 9. But these people, you know, they had elders in every city that were ordained by the apostles. And that's supposed to spread out. And that's how you have the church in the New Testament. But now, oh, we just we don't do it that way anymore. No, we have to have our church buildings and be basically, you know, a different version of Roman Catholicism. Adding traditions to the scriptures. And overthrowing the scriptures with our tradition. Yeah, that's what they do. <clears throat> but it says here, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Like I said, once you get over to these people over here, the latter end of them, both are ending, both are bad, but the latter end with these people is worse than in the beginning. You see, because now they look back at the things that were here in this bad system and they say, I hate the King James Bible. I hate modest apparel. I hate the old hymns. I hate all those conservative things that were there. And they don't see through the added traditions of men. They just condemn the things that were right that they learned back here. So the latter end with them is worse than the beginning. It gets worse for them. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. It's interesting, the girl I mentioned earlier, she was a sow that was washed back here. Had some good standards. Should have continued, should have said, okay... I see these things in the scriptures. I'm not going to turn against Jesus and I'm not going to turn against the Bible, but I'll turn against this wicked, you know, pagan papal nonsense over here. I'll turn against that, but I'm not leaving Jesus Christ. I remember Paula Hiles uh, was married to David Hiles. I think it was his first wife. And she, um, I heard her interviewed the one time and she was talking about all the horrible things that the Hiles family was doing and whatever, well, family, the, the Jack and David. And uh, the guy interviewing her, he said, um, are you still with the Lord? And she said, oh, my, yeah. She said, that won't cause me to leave Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. 
And um, it actually brought me stronger in a relationship with the Lord because I realized that whole system is corrupt. And I got out of it. Still going to a conservative church or something at the time. Hopefully she got out of that by now. But, you know, you don't leave the Lord. You don't leave the standards of truth. See? But what happens is with this chick that was raised a uh, Baptist pastor's daughter and then she's, she leaves, goes to university, becomes an atheist, and now she's in a worship center. Um, she leaves the sow that was washed. She had some good standards. And she goes over here so that she can go and wallow in the mire. She wants to go and roll around in all that filth and go and dress in modestly and probably get some you know, Christian tattoos, whatever that is. You know, yeah, let me get some poison chemicals, uh, poisonous chemicals. According to the American Chemical, Chemical Society, by the way, you can watch my study. Let me get some poisonous chemicals injected into my skin to lower my immunity. Yeah, real smart. <laughs> well, everybody else is doing it. <laughs> okay. But uh, watch, please watch the study. But you see the whole point here. Satan uses church buildings to create antichrists. He's been doing this now for a long time. And what do you have with Roman Catholicism, by the way, too, the one that, that's the parent organization, the mother of uh, harlots and abominations of the earth? You know, what do you have with Roman Catholicism? You have the same problem. How many people have been raised Catholic? And then the priest calls them into the office and they think, wow, what an honor to go into the priest's office. And they come out thinking something completely different because they've been molested. And they come out and they become atheists. And they might go to some liberal Catholic church. I mean, the Catholics are the same thing as the, you know, Protestant, you know, supposed, uh, like you can't really call them Bible believers, but the Protestant churches, like the IFB, um, they're the same thing as Roman Catholicism. You have conservative, traditional Catholic churches, and you have modern, liberal Catholic churches, woke Catholic churches and things. So it's the same thing whether you go to Catholic or Protestant really quite sad. But uh, what's it leading to? Well, all of these people are one day going to receive their Christ. And there's a big controversy I heard recently here on uh, X, uh, Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, about uh, some, I think Candace Owens or something made a comment about Christ is king. And people said, oh, you know, I agree, Christ is king. Well, you know, yeah, sure, but uh, you better define which Christ you're talking about. Because you see, there are two different Christs. That's why the Bible actually gives a reference to the Lord and His Christ. The devil has a Christ as well. And he's going to be showing up in the not-too-distant future. And he's going to deceive a lot of people. A whole lot of people. And I think that these people right in this system are going to probably be deceived. Uh, maybe not as much as these people who are actually cheering on his appearance. But they're going to be deceived as well. How do you make it out of the deception? One way and one way only. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. God's word is what's going to lead you to the truth. A lot of people like to attack me and they say, oh, I have to be, you think that you're the only one that's saved. You think that uh, you're right and everybody else is wrong and whatever. No, I think that uh, the Bible is right. The King James Bible. God's perfect word for English speaking Christians. Right here. This is your standard. I've never been the standard. Um, I'll show you the truth, but it's up to you to compare what I say to the scriptures, to what you see out there in the world. And if you're seeing this whole system, you better get out of this. You better run from this. All right. And if you're an atheist and you're still on the bridge above the flames of hell and you're saying, I don't want to go here and I don't want to go there. There's another option. All right. Get away from both these places. Don't go here. Don't go there. And you need to get off of this bridge of being a fool here and uh, saying, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure. I'll just wait for things and whatever. That's a bad idea. Okay, you're running out of time. So that is going to be it. Um, I really do pray you take heed to what I've said. And we will see you in upcoming studies. Thank you for watching.